Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back on my channel. Today we have the third video of our MATLAB series and we are going to talk about MATLAB as the intelligent calculator. So we are going to talk about addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, etc. I will show you how you can create your first script, how you can comment, uncomment code, how you can create code sections, show you the three magic C's. But before we get started, um, please make sure to check out the GitHub repository. Some of you might not have seen it, but I have uploaded the cheat sheet for MATLAB on, on GitHub, which can be found inside the repository. And there you can find basically the most common commands that you can use. What I would recommend is that you download the cheat sheet, print it out, and then take it with you, for, uh, maybe in university, maybe in school. And I think it's very good thing to have next to you. So make sure to check it out and let me know what you think about it. Also if you find any typos in it feel free to contact me I will make sure to fix them as soon as possible. Okay before we jump right into MATLAB and without talking too much I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel because I posted this uh, last video basically no the first video on Reddit and it has over 500 upvotes which is incredible because I thought okay maybe they're all going to hate me but my post has 94% upvote rate and it has like 513 upvotes so uh, thanks a ton for that and even my subscriber count exploded I mean it's still not that much as compared to other youtubers but uh, for me it's still a lot uh, funny thing was I was waking up and then saw all the guys who subscribed to my channel it was kind of amazing feeling so thanks a ton for that um, if you like the other videos or this video especially, make sure to share it with your friends and whoever might benefit from it. Without talking too much, let's jump right into MATLAB and let's go! So before we jump right into MATLAB, just a quick reminder again that you can find the MATLAB cheat sheet here in the repository. It's right here. So if you click on the, on the picture, you will be redirected directly to the MATLAB cheat sheet and you can download it by clicking on the download button right here. So uh, basically... Every command can be found inside of here, or at least the most useful ones or most used ones. So feel free to check it out. So let's jump to MATLAB. We are going to start now by creating our first variable. And it's basically the same as in the last video. So let's say we have a equals 10. Then it's saved in the workspace. But we can also create a vector that goes from 1 to 10. And as you can see, I have named the vector A as well. And it creates a row vector that can be seen in the workspace. And it overrides the 10 that we have assigned the A to beforehand. If we double click now on A, we can see the one, 1 by 10 row vector. And we can even make changes. So that means, let's say we pick this here this number and say this should be not a 5 but maybe a 10. Click enter and now you see in the workspace even the position where the 5 has been has been changed to a 10. So we can also close this and if we now call A you can see the 10 is assigned to this position where the 5 has been. Now another important thing that we can do is of course use the three magic C's which I'll talk later on about. So CLC as you know stands for clear command window. Clear clears the workspace and there's a third one which makes the three magic C's complete which is close all. So if I would create a figure which is now empty because I haven't put anything inside of the figure I would now click close all it would close this figure. So as you can see there's no other MATLAB application open. So let's do a little bit of uh, arithmetic here. We're not going to put it inside of our command window, but we are creating a script. What is a script now? A script is something like a logbook, like a diary if you want, where you can put all the information or all your ideas to code inside. You can find it in the upper left corner right here. Click on new script and that would open this one here. Usually I undock this, but for now I'm just leaving it where it is. And we can immediately save our script 
say introduction to MATLAB, sounds good. We say, um, say third video, third video dot M, which is the standard extension for M MATLAB files. Click save. Now it is saved. You can see it even in the, in the directory that the M file of with the name third video has been created. What I al always do in the beginning is to write the three magic C. So clear command window, clear and close all. That makes sure that the whole command window when running the script is cleared. So nothing that you have run previously can be seen in the command window, which is quite convenient. Clear clears the whole workspace to make sure that there's no confusion while running the code. Maybe the code might use another variable that has the same name from the old code. So this is one of the big errors that you can make. And close all will close all the figures just to make sure no figure from the last code you have been running is still open. Another thing to note here is that I have not written clear all, which you can do. The thing is that clear is more efficient than clear all because if you run the script multiple times, you have significant performance improvements because the MATLAB already knows, okay, I've run this code already and it knows in the background that or saves some information from the previous run. So clear all would clear everything and MATLAB would simply forget what you have done. So I would recommend just writing clear. So let's create our first variable here. Let's call it just first var for first variable. A good thing to do is always give your variable meaningful names. I mean, if I write now x equals one and I look at the code five years later, I'm not sure what this x equals one, one means. What I can do though is comment it. X is maybe um, data from colleague or whatever. Um, yeah, or any other comment, just to make sure that you know what this variable means. Of course, this is no data from colleague now, but this is just for the sake of explanation. You can also like, if you import a file, then write, okay, this is data from this guy rec regarding this and contains this data, just to make sure that you remember what you did. So we can create several other variables. Let's say uh, first one, as we have done beforehand. So let's mistakenly put it inside of here. First var is 10. Our second variable is, let's say 30. And our third variable equals 50. Uh, the thing is that I have put a semicolon at the end and you're asking, okay, why have you done that? This is just to suppress the output. If I now remove the semicolon from the third variable and click on run or click F5, you see, if I hover over this run icon, you can see F5. Only third var will be printed out because it's the only variable in our script that is without a semicolon at the end. If I put a semicolon at the end, there's no output. So this is very convenient because you can only output relevant stuff and suppress redundant outputs by putting a semicolon at the end. So keep that in mind. We can now use these variables to perform mathematical operations. Let's say we use it for addition one. And let's say we take our second variable and add it to the first variable. So click F5 and you see the addition is 40. Let's create a second mathematical operation, which is addition two. Call it second var plus let's make a mistake on purpose, third v, like this. And if I now try to run the code, undefined function or variable, third v. So this is a very specific error. You see, okay, the variable as mentioned here is not defined. And we know we have made a mistake. Add the a here, click F5, and we are good to go. Let's continue with, let's say, multiplication. Multiplication one. We can also take the first variable. If, I'm, if I have two long variable names, which is not very good practice, but let's say I have two. First variable, I click first, and then I can click tab, the tabulator. Then it would autocomplete the variable name. Times second tab, click tab, second var. And that is 300, looks good. Multiplication two, 
then we can let's say take the third variable times the second variable times the first variable and that is 15,000 looks also good then we go to division let's say we divide the third variable by the first variable you see it's very straightforward so you can do everything with these operators so case 5 makes sense let's just call it division 1 to be consistent division 2 is let's say the second variable divided by the third variable and you see it's 0.6 so good to note here is that you will get a double out of that if you type in now who's you can see that every type of variable we created is of type double but we can also perform type conversion let's say we can go from string to to numeric value or vice versa but that will be covered in one of the next videos so let's continue let's say we want to take the power of a number uh, first variable no that's not a good name let's call it a uh, power one is um, the third variable to the power of three and what's that big number 125,000 makes sense yeah makes sense power two equals second variable to the power of two what's that that's 900 makes also sense you also see by the way just a small hint you see that i do some spaces in between that's just a good practice i think the code looks way cleaner i can also remove this but for me it looks very dirty to be honest i could this would also run it's legit code but uh, to me it's look, it looks very ugly not very aesthetically pleasing so i always try to put a space in between the operators we can also use the variables to perform power calculation power three equals the first variable to the power of the second variable and that's one to the power of 30. Uh, we have the basic operations but we forgot subtraction <laughs> subtraction one equals it's very straightforward as in the other cases second variable for instance minus the first variable should be 20 that's right and then subtraction 2 just as a last example is let's say the third variable minus 99 I forgot the spaces here sorry it's minus 49 makes sense as well now to comment code sections let's say you do not want to have this part here evaluated you can mark this and then click either here on comment is the short key is control R uncommon is control T so if I click now I mark this click control R control T and then comment uncomment comment uncomment you also have not to mark the, uh, the whole thing you can only also go like this let's say like this then it does the job as well let's say we just comment this here then we can call also create sections uh, with uh, two percentage symbols let's say um, our variables then we create another sec section uh, addition then here we have multiplication you see this is look it looks very good because we have these sections and it looks very like clean coding and yeah just just aesthetically pleasing then we continue here with power and here with subtraction let's say uh, what I also like to do is before putting these here uh, let's say this is a specific work let's say homework um, or no make it specific for this course uh, third m third MATLAB video code example then maybe put the date here let's say today's or August 18th 2019 maybe the author that's me and maybe some site information 
that gives the guy who reads the code some side information on what you actually have been doing here and also with these sections ah, okay now i know here's here are the variables here's the addition here's the multiplication etc now regarding the data types i have shown you that if once you type in host you can see that every variable uh, has a type double now you can perform some type conversions if wanted but that would be covered in a separate video because we can perform plenty of operations regarding type conversions. However, we do not have to explicitly do this. MATLAB is doing the conversion for us. But let's say we want to work with integers or let's say we want to s round it to the next higher number or lower number. Then you can use special functions from MATLAB. But that's going to be covered in one of the next videos. So this was the third video of our MATLAB series. I hope that you enjoyed it and it could take something away from it. In the next video we are going to talk about something a little bit different, which is MATLAB versus Octave. That is basically a software that you can use as a substitute for MATLAB and it's 99% the same as MATLAB, a little bit other graphical user interface. Some commands might not be identical. But I'm going to talk about the differences in the next video and also how you can download it and if you ha don't have MATLAB, make use of Octave. So if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with your friends and colleagues and see you in the next one. Peace!